Hello everyone, and welcome to the 32nd Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can archive our own objects to store them as NS data. So in the previous tutorial, I showed you how we could work with some of the objects we find in the foundation framework, such as NS array, NS string, and NS number, and I showed you how we could archive those and store them as NS data. But of course, we want to be able to do this with our own objects so that we can obviously store whatever we want to make here. So this is basically the fundamental way of how files are saved in Coco. So um, it's a pretty interesting tutorial and uh, you'll definitely be coming back to this in the Coco tutorials as well. But what we're going to be covering is how we can save the values of our rectangle class and then bring that rectangle object back into our program. So Basically what we want to do here, of course, is we have to work with the rectangle class itself. So if you have the rectangle class sitting on your hard drive from previous tutorials, because uh, we've used this rectangle class throughout most of them, then you can copy the most recent rectangle class over if you want. But if not, I'm just going to quickly run through what we have. So basically the rectangle class uh, just has an integer of height and width. And then we have the properties for both of those. And then we have some initializers as well that we can use to set up the height and width uh, when we create the object. Then in the implementation section, we have the synthesize for height and width, which creates our accessor methods. We have our initializers below, and then we have our little init right there. And of last but not least, we have our description method, which returns the NS string, and that's just whenever you print out your object, that's what uh, shows up and this description method just displays the height and width values of the given rectangle. So anyway, if you don't have any of this in your current rectangle class, you can just copy and paste whatever you see here into that class. So anyway, what we're going to be doing, of course, is figuring out how we can create our object to actually go into NS data, or how we can uh, encode our object to go into NS data. So for any object to actually be archivable or uh, use the NS key to archiver and then archive that into NS data, what we need to do is have our class comply with NS copying. So basically what you want to go into is your rectangle header, rectangle header file, which is your interface. And NS copying is a protocol and it simply has two methods that we have to implement and that's all we have to do. So we talked about uh, protocols in a previous tutorial, and all we're complying with is the NS coding protocol. So just add your greater than less than brackets and throw in NS coding into your interface. So once you've done that, now we have to, of course, comply with the NS coding protocol. So the first method we want to work with here is encode with coder, which looks like that. And the second is init with coder, which looks like that. So, of course, we're not done, though. We want to actually fill out what these methods are going to do. So the first one, encode with coder, is what happens any time you go to save this object into NS data. It's what's going to happen when you go to encode this object. So basically what we want to do is figure out how we can encode all the values that are inside our rectangle class, which are just simply the height and width. So this is actually pretty simple. All we have to use is the NS coder that's given. And NS coder is actually an abstract class, but what it actually does is pretty interesting is that it uses a concrete class that it has. And for this example, it uses the NS keyed archiver class that we talked about in the previous tutorial. And all it simply means is that the NS keyed archiver is going to archive any of the objects that we are trying to archive. So we're going to archive our height and width, and I'll talk a little bit what we do in a second, but all we're really doing here is encoding these objects, and then that will know what to do for when it tr transfers that into the NS data. So what we're working with, again, is the NS key archiver. So what we have to do is we use our coder that's right here. So we say a coder, and all we want to do is say encode int for key. And again, this is using the NS keyed archiver class, and you know it's keyed for any time you see for key. Because if you're using a key, you know, you get it. You're using a keyed something. And so what we want to do here is what we're going to do is we're going to encode 
our height and our width, and we're going to give them a certain key so that if we take it back out of data, we can just ask for that whatever key that we want, and then it will retrieve that value for whatever key we're asking for. So we're going to encode our height for the key height. And we're also going to encode our uh, width value, and we're going to encode that with a key of width. So just to point out though, there's many other things you can use when you're doing this. So you'll see you'll have encode float, you'll also have encode object for key down here. There's many different uh, items that you can use when you're working with this. So don't think that uh, integers are the only objects you can work with. You can work with basically any object you ever work with in Objective-C. And you can check that out in the documentation if you just look up NS uh, Coder or NS Keyed Archiver, either one. So what we have now is we're done with the encode with coder. It will encode all the objects when that's called. It just encodes our height and width with given keys. And now in it with coder is what's called whenever it wants to take itself out of data. So uh, obviously when we're taking it out of the data, it wants to know, well, we're going to have to set up this entire object. So this is very similar to your in it with anything else method. So your init method, your init with coder is very similar to that. It returns the object that you're working with. So what you want to do is basically just do an init method. You do self gets super init and again that just calls the super class so in this case it's going to be ns object but if you wanted to have it so that it called the uh, let's say you were subclassing from something else that also implemented init with coder you'd want to make sure that you're doing super init with coder um, so that you you know retrieve the coding values from that class as well but since NS object, which is our subclass of rec or our rectangle class, then uh, NS object does not implement uh, NS coding, so we don't we're not going to call init with coder on that class. So in our example here, we're just going to say self gets super init, and then we'll say if self, which means basically super init was successful, then we'll say well we're going to set up our values now. So height is going to get the value of whatever is in our coder here. So we're going to use a decoder, which is the variable right here. We're going to say a decoder decode int for key. And of course, we put in the key of height for our height instance variable. And then we just want to do the same thing for our width. So we're going to say a decoder decode int for key. And then this time we're going to use our width key because that's what we encoded our width value with before. And then, of course, when we're done, since this is an init method, we just return self. So that's all we really have to do. It's pretty simple to implement both those methods. All you're doing is saving all the values that is in, the, or in your class, and then you just figure out how you're going to retrieve those values by using the encoding and decoding options. So now, of course, we got to figure out uh, if this is going to work. So we've done all the stuff we need to do with our rectangle class, and now we can run this in our main to obviously encode these objects. So let's create two rectangles. We'll call it rect1, and we'll say rectangle alloc in it with height width, and we'll give it a height of 56 and a width of 48, and then we'll create another rectangle. We'll say rect2 gets rectangle alloc in it with height, and then we'll just say something like 12 and 6. And now what we can do if we want is we can put these both in an NS array. Don't have to, but you know, may as well anyway. So we'll just say NS array, array with objects. And the first one is going to be our rect1, and the second is going to be rect2. And before I forget, let's make sure we release these objects later in our program. So we'll say rect1 release, and rect2 release. So now let's encode this like we did before. We'll say ns data, data, and then we'll use our ns keyed archiver like we did before, and then we'll say simply archive root ob or archive data with root object and then we'll just archive our array like so and if we wanted we can see what we get from this so we'll just print out whatever is in our data and what you should get is just a 
jumble of numbers and that basically represents data or binary data or whatever. I guess it's not binary, but you know, whatever. It's some crazy data that we don't have to worry about. But anyway, as you can see, we got a whole jumble of letters and numbers that um, represents NS data. So now what we can do is we can take this out of our data like we did before. So we'll say NS array, array from data and we'll just take that out of the array or out of our data so we'll say ns keyed unarchiver and all we want to do is unarchive object with data data and now we just want to ns log whatever is in that array and if this uh, was successful then of course all these objects should have been properly archived and we should be able to unarchive them as well so we'll just print out array from data which is the one that we get out of our data object and now we can see when we run it that we get rect height 56 width 48 and then we have a rect height of 12 with a width of 6 and again that's just the description method printing that all out for us because the array just prints out all the objects so anyway that's basically your simple setup for archiving any of the objects that you create it's very simple all you have to do is comply with NS coding you implement the two methods that you want encode all the objects that are in the class and you preferably you would use um, the keys to retrieve them and then you just set those objects up like that so very simple process um, and uh, it's very nice obviously whenever you want to save any kind of data you can simply uh, comply with NS coding you can save to NS data and then you can save any objects that you want into a file so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on um, complying or making your objects uh, able to archive themselves or archive them into NS data. And basically I just showed you how you can comply with the NS coding protocol. So if you have any questions, please leave your questions in the comments below and please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any additional ones, you can uh, look my name up on Google Plus or Twitter and you'll uh, be able to you know send any questions you have there as well so anyway i'll see you next tutorial